Hello, welcome back to uh, Listening to Me Talk About Women's Health and um, today we're in our final chapter of the luteal or of the menstrual cycle and we're talking about the luteal phase which is from um, after you ovulate to when you bleed, your menstruation phase. Uh, the rules I'm going to give you uh, here don't apply across the whole two weeks. I like two-ish weeks. I like to sort of um, smush it into two phases. Um, so we'll talk about the first bit and then we'll talk about the second bit, which makes sense. So this phase is characterised by progesterone all by itself. It's massive. It does this huge curve from ovulation, pumps way up if you're ovulating, and then comes down right before you um, menstruate. Um, Progesterone, like in itself, it has hundreds of functions in the functions in the body. Um, some of them are great, like it can it can calm your brain, um, it can help you sleep, uh, it increases anti-inflammatory agents in your body, uh, lowers blood pressure. Um, on the flip side, though, it does increase your base metabolic rate um, and increase your core temperature. And because of this, women need to eat more. So at a fundamental level, if you are dieting, the second phase of your cycle, you need to give yourself more food and, and preferably um, sort of protein fat kind of food. Uh, without going into too much detail, it's one of the reasons why women struggle with diets designed for men so much. So to take advantage of our superpowers in this phase, we need to take advantage of the effects that progesterone has on our body, which is primarily these anti-inflammatory agents and lower blood pressure, because that gives us huge opportunity for uh, recovery, but also for just going at a slightly lower level and going a little bit longer. So our superpower for this phase is endurance. So we're going to do the same mini circuit we've done all month, but this time we're going to put the power plate on 60 seconds. Now, if you're doing um, just regular weights, your uh, follicular phase, you might be doing sets of five to 10, like very heavy weights. Around ovulation, you might be doing 10 or 12. So you've, you've lightened up the load a bit, slowed it down to get it right technique. In this phase, we're talking 15 to 20 reps. Slightly lighter, longer, still just as hard if that's what you need. Um, but towards the second half of this phase, when your progesterone and estrogen start doing that downward curve again, um, you, most women, not all women, most women will start feeling pretty near again. Okay, so to when I started this talk with you guys, we talked about how the, the superpower of the menstrual phase was recovery. And for some women, that recovery section needs to be like late luteal phase. Okay, so most of us will get away with um, dropping intensity, boosting endurance, and then maybe doing more sessions even. Um, but for some of us, you'll have to do your rest relaxation in that second half of this phase. Uh, for the rest of us, we do our endurance and then just bring it down as the date of your menstruation phase starts and then we go into rest, relaxation, yoga again um, uh, before starting the cycle all over again. So let's do a little demonstration of our um, mini circuit. So we had heavy squats and I said if you're used to doing five kilos, pump it up to eight. Well, today we'll drop it down to six. Okay, so we've backed it off a little bit from our super heavy and we'll do 20 reps, right, instead of 10. I'm not sure why I feel like I have to actually do all this. I feel like you get it, right? So I'm gonna stop a little early. I have already trained today. Okay, and then we supersetted that with a pulse squat. So on your power plate, instead of doing 30 seconds today, you'll do 60 seconds. Again, this is hard. It hurts, 
You can matrix it, okay? Moving your feet every different direction. So we're actually getting some diversity still through our bodies. And let's pretend that's a minute. You might do that three times. You might do it five times. It really depends on what your individual predilection for exercise is. If you need to feel exhausted, by all means, go crazy. So our second little mini circuit was um, we did a push-up matrix and a bench press. So again, if we use eight kilos, we'd pumped the weight up in the first half of our cycle. You'd spend a round ovulation getting that weight right and in control. And then you might back it off just a little bit for this last half, but you do more reps. So we're starting here. We're setting to 60 seconds on our power plate, which I'm not actually going to do. And I'm just moving my arms for our matrix today. Not for any reason, except that's what I felt like doing. <laughs> Let's pretend I've done a minute. We go do our bench press. So again, these weights aren't as heavy as what I was doing in my follicular phase, but I'm gonna do 20 reps instead of 10. So we start to build endurance except I'm not actually going to do it today because you guys don't need to sit there and watch me exercise. Then the final thing we did in the follicular phase, we did this explosive bounce up burpee, right? Um, last week, we slowed it down, put it in control. This week, we can keep it slowed down and we do a minute rather than 30 seconds. We supersetted this in the first week. We did squat jumps. In the second week, we did wall sits just as hard, but easier to control alignment. And in this third week, we're going to stick it on one minute and stay down here. If it needs to hurt, you can go for a run. If it doesn't need to hurt, then don't feel any pressure. Just do what you can. Let's pretend I did a minute. So I said I was going to divide this into two. The second half of the luteal phase as you start to approach menstruation. Um, there's a big drop of estrogen and progesterone. The estrogen drop is what we're interested in because it affects serotonin and, and we know serotonin is tied up in mental health, depression, that sort of thing. So if we have this drop every month, it can affect our mood. Although, I must say, it's not well understood. We just know they affect each other. So in the late luteal, if your mood is being affected, um, exercise is important, movement is important, but you really want it to be the kind of movement that fills your cup rather than punishes you or takes something away from you. So um, like I say, yoga a lot. For some women, it's not yoga. It might be bushwalking. It might be walking on the beach with friends. It might be ocean swims. It might be flogging yourself at the gym, right? But it's got to be, it might be dancing. It's got to be something that boosts your mood and not um, suppresses it. And we just need to be sensitive around mood at this time and not just discount um, your feelings to PMS, oh, I'm hormonal. It's partly true, but it's also not your fault. And it, it's also like a, an actual chemical reaction happening in your body, which you can take as a cue, cue to wind it down a bit again. And ultimately, you will be stronger. The strongest and fittest clients I've got are the ones that recover well, that take time to stop. And matching your cycle to your intensity, it builds in a natural place to stop and wind down, which is ultimately really good for us. Most of the clients we've got uh, coming into the gym here need permission to, to back off. Um, there's not many people buying power plates, exercising, that um, are there to cut corners or not work hard. Most of us want to work hard and we need to be um, allowed to back it off and bring it up and back it off and bring it up. And the cool thing about cycling is 
next week or the week after menstruation phase, you'll be more likely to amp up that weight, to walk into that boxing studio, to give something a go because you know now's the time and you'll actually push yourself harder in the long term while allowing yourself the recovery and you'll end up fitter, stronger, faster, all the things. Um, so essentially, in summary, what I've showed you this month is the same six exercises tweaked just a bit. So you keep doing what you're already doing, but start to tweak it just a bit for you. Um, and I'd be super interested in your feedback if you have any. Um, don't forget to send me your questions. And there's also some links in the text under this video um, for you to get further information or further education. I'll see you next week.